Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Now, early automotive history is full of people that, though born into poverty, rose to the highest levels of wealth, respect, and fame through their brilliance and dogged determination in designing and making cars. Henry Royce is a good example. Starting his career as an orphaned farm boy and eventually becoming a knighted lord through his engineering skill. And, of course, his name endures to the general public to this day. On the opposite side of the coin are those that were born into wealth and used said money to promote the automobile, Count Albert de Dion being a noteworthy example. Yet, de Dion's name is not well known outside of those automotive historiographers who like to geek out over such historical tidbits. Yet there is one such rich nobleman whose name does endure to this day in the automotive world, and that man is Vincenzo Florio Jr. First, some background on his family. The Florio clan were successful merchants in Calabria and southern Italy and had been since the late 17th century. They specialized in importing spices, chocolate, tobacco, and other such products from various European colonies in Asia, Africa, and the Americas. In 1783, a series of large earthquakes hit the region over the course of a couple of months, and the Florios decided to move their enterprise elsewhere. Arriving in Palermo, Sicily the same year, they continued their business and were quite prosperous. At this point, two brothers, Paolo and Ignacio, were running the family business and expanded into other ventures, one being the distribution of quinine, which at the time was a miracle drug used for treating malaria, and another was tuna fishing. Now, Paolo died fairly young, but he did have a son, Vincenzo the Elder, and Paolo's brother, Ignacio, raised him as his own. When Ignacio passed away in 1828, Vincenzo the Elder inherited the family business. He had a fortune to work with and expanded into winemaking and cotton production. By the 1850s, the Florios were amongst the wealthiest families in Italy. The Florio clan married into Italian nobility, which greatly increased their political influence. By the late 19th century, the Florios were senators, barons, counts, and absurdly rich. They controlled much of the shipping, industry, and even tourism trade in Sicily. And it was into this family that Vincenzo Florio Jr. was born in 1883. He was the second son of Senator Ignacio Jr. Yeah, it's complicated. And was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Being the second son in a noble family, he was the spare in the scheme of noble and royal families having an heir and a spare, and as such, he was not forced into the mold to be the man to run the family in the future, and this suited him just fine. As a youth, he was a restless sportsman, not very interested in academic studies anyway, but loved to go fast and compete in whatever contest was at hand. Having access to big bags of cash, but no real responsibilities, kind of like the Kardashians, he became enthralled with cars and car racing. This was becoming a new pastime for rich people with lots of time on their hands. So he bought a car and a motorcycle from Panhard and Levisor in 1902 and brought them to Sicily. These were, in fact, the first motor vehicles ever brought to the island. Of course, the first thing he wanted to do was organize a race but his vehicles were the only ones in Sicily, so he chose to race both of them against a horse. Young Vinny would drive the car, a buddy of his would take the motorbike, and a third fellow would ride his horse along the short five-kilometer route in town. And the winner was the horse. Due to this, he went all Martin Brody and got a bigger car, a 40-horsepower Panhard, and went racing on the mainland. The first race he went to, which would be called the Targa Rignano, was held near Padua in northern Italy, and he won it. 
The following year, he hired a driver to drive his Panhard, who also won. In 1904, he drove a Duroc himself and won that race as well. By the age of 21, he was amongst the most famous race car drivers in Italy. In 1905, Vincenzo decided to organize his own race. He traveled to France to meet with other race organizers to get not only advice, but also support for the project. His enthusiasm was infectious, and he got the advice and support he sought from the likes of Albert de Dion, Gordon Bennett, Desailen, and others. His first race, called the Copa Florio, was held in Brescia and was a success. But Florio wanted a large international race to be held in Sicily, which he would organize in 1906. First, he founded an officiating car club, the Automobile Club of Sicily, and was its first president. Next, he worked with a publisher, Henri Desgrange, who was the editor of the French magazine L'Auto, to promote the event and get the word out. He determined a route for the race, which would be 92 miles. He titled the race Targa Florio, and commissioned the famous French artist René Lalique to make the trophy, a bronze claque with a bas-relief race car across it, with a blue enamel sky as the background. For the next 70 years, the Targa Florio was one of the most prestigious races to participate in, and winning it gathered international attention. Florio himself would continue to race cars and other things as well, establishing speedboat races, bicycle races, and motorcycle races. Vincenzo Florio was a gifted artist, talented driver, and passionate about whatever he put his mind to do. Unfortunately, the Targo Florio was discontinued as a race in 1977 due to mounting safety concerns, though it is still run as a rally and a tribute even today, tribute to one of Italy's greatest motoring sportsmen. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.